this kind of damage, even if, even if they had gotten the parents' consent, they would not have ethically been able to do that. But of course, they're already trying to get parents' consent for abortions. And as we covered yesterday, as Jakari Jackson covered on the nightly news yesterday, and uh, Chris just brought this article into me, we had this up on uh, Infowars. If you, would, this is a, a letter, a pastoral letter that Planned Parenthood was sending out, giving to uh, people who are considering an abortion. And they said, if you'd like to speak with a clergy person, your local Planned Parenthood Health Center can refer you to someone who will be supportive of you and your decision. Your privacy will be protected. All conversations will be completely confidential. So there you go. I guess if you can, with a parental consent, murder a child, then I guess our government can do that to 1,300 children. But as I pointed out earlier, this is, I think, a week that we need to think about press freedom. We need to think about what real journalism is. You know, earlier Alex was talking about the revelations that Steve Pachinik had about uh, being prosecuted, being pursued by the uh, State Department, by Obama's State Department. We need to remember that under the Espionage Act of 1917, there have only been 11 cases since 1917. That means that in 92 years, there were four prosecutions. Then in Obama's five years, there have been seven prosecutions. Do you understand that? You see how that's stepped up? And of course, one of those people that's being prosecuted is uh, James Risen, uh, a New York Times reporter, a Pulitzer Prize winner, and he was just uh, rejected from having his case heard before the U.S. Supreme Court because he did not want to give up his journalistic source. Now, this is a case where this is part of his book, his 2006 book, State of War, The Secret History of the CIA and the Bush Administration. And in that story, there was a CIA agent, Sterling, who told Risen, or who, someone who told Risen about a mismanaged CIA scheme to supply Iran with inaccurate nuclear weapon blueprints. The misinformation ploy fell apart, he said, after the Russian scientist who delivered the plans... Notice that it had design flaws, and he tipped off the Iranians. So this is something that was in his book. They want to know who the CIA agent was that did this. He's protecting his source on principle. He says he's ready to go to jail, and he may very well go to jail because Obama has been aggressively going after journalists while he's releasing Taliban people. But before I get on to that, I want to talk about the fact that we had this uh, teenager, Andrew Demeter, who confronted Nancy Pelosi. Now, uh, Andrew Demeter was one of the Paul Revere contestants. He entered several fine documentaries. That was a year ago. Uh, we've interviewed him in the past. Leanne McAdoo has interviewed him, and you can see that interview in the article that we linked to. But I think it's pretty amazing that he confronts Nancy Pelosi and, again, asks her the obvious questions. He says, isn't the, aren't the, NS, isn't the NSA program where it's doing dragnet spying of the entire population, isn't that a violation of the Fourth Amendment, it really took her off balance. Do we have a clip of that that we can play, guys? Why do you support the NSA's illegal and ubiquitous uh, data collection? Well, I, I do not. I have <laughs> questions about the metadata collection uh, uh. that they were uh, collecting unless they had a reason to do so. Uh, so I found, I was one from, I, did, I didn't support, I didn't support Amash that resolution. I didn't think that was the appropriate resolution. Uh, but I do think that the burden is on the, the uh, department, and I have fought them for years, on the community, fought them for She's years. She's just rambling. She's on not prepared for this. It's pretty amazing. You need to watch this whole video, complete with subtitles. Excellent job, Andrew Demeter. That's real journalism. I liked this quote, but before we go to it, I want, I want to ask uh, Paul Joseph Watson about this. He posted the article today, and we got Paul joining us from the UK. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Hi, David. Did you get some sleep? Uh, a little bit, not much. Kind of uh, the sleep setting up in an airplane is, is basically it. How about you? <laughs> well, I got back a lot earlier than you, so I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is pretty amazing. And as you pointed out in the article here, and, and this is the thing that I thought was, was most telling, is that he had to fight with C-SPAN in order to get their video footage. And the reason that they gave for it, they said... Uh, we wouldn't want to damage C-SPAN's relationship with leader Pelosi and her office. So I want to get your comments on that as we come back. That's what it's all about, isn't it, Paul? It's about maintaining their access because here's C-SPAN. 
You know, they're not like CBS, but they are like CBS because they want, even though they're publicly funded, they want access to those people. We're going to be right back with Paul Joseph Watson from the UK. Stay with us. Attention all radio listeners. Survival Life is giving away free credit card knives exclusively to our radio listeners. Visit FreeCovertKnife.com to see this covert knife in action and to claim yours free. It's the same knife you've seen in airline magazines for $29.95. But today, it's yours free. Just pay shipping and handling. Go to FreeCovertKnife.com. Go now. More and more people are discovering the incredible benefits of alkalizing the body. And there's no better product for it than AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops. Packed with a powerful combination of the most alkaline minerals and compounds, just a few drops in water will rid your body of harmful waste and give you more vibrance and vigor than you've had in years. Now buy two bottles and get $10 off your order. Call 800-518-7615 or visit ALKAVision.com. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. Great news, pure water lovers. BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com has a special discount offer for all GCN listeners. You can't do better than a Big Berkey for economy. For only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. There's none better than a Big Berkey for emergency preparedness as a backup water source. And you just can't beat a Big Berkey to remove dangerous chlorine, all types of fluoride, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, parasites, and unhealthy bodies products from municipal water. Berkey water filter systems are even powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. For the gold standard in water filters, get a Big Berkey at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com and all GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. For details, call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey water filters for the love of clean water. Get the most important package of information you'll ever receive in your life for only $10. The package includes three books and seven DVD programs which cover biblical miracles and prophecy. The Shroud of Turin, The Third Secret of Fatima, What Really Happened to the Catholic Church, and more. Call 800-513-0029. That's 800-513-0029. Or go to VaticanCatholic.com. That's VaticanCatholic.com. 800-513-0029. VaticanCatholic.com. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I'm joined with Paul Joseph Watson from the UK. And I just was, wanted to get uh, Paul's take on this article that he put up about Andrew Demeter, a teenager, confronting Nancy Pelosi about NSA spying. Watson, it, that was a great article. This guy is really good. We, we had several entries from him, as I mentioned before, in the Paul Revere contest. I really like what he had to say, and it's just a simple question that he asked her, isn't it? 
Well, I mean, what we need to remember about Andrew Demeter is the fact that he's only 16 years old. And, yeah. You know, he's got to be one of the most eloquent 16-year-olds I've yeah. ever heard. That's right. So he's a credit to his generation and he's, you know, he's an inspiration to others. But the, the key about the article and the key about this confrontation with Pelosi... Let's remember, of course, that initially he was supposed to meet Harry Reid. This ha this occurred back in April when Harry Reid called supporters of Clive and Bundy domestic terrorists. <laughs> so he, he was planning to hand a constitution, a copy of the constitution to Harry Reid. So he had to go through this metal detector there in the Capitol. They asked him what he had. He said he had a constitution for Harry Reid. That got cancelled. So <laughs> Pelosi was the, the poor substitute. And so, you know, he had this opportunity to confront her about the NSA, but he was only able to whip out his phone after he had already asked the question and begin filming her. That's why he needed the C-SPAN B-roll footage, which they were filming from further back to get the whole confrontation. So, as he said, he went back and forth with C-SPAN on a, an email tug of war just to try and get this footage. And as he mentioned before the break, uh, they pressed Demeter as to why it mattered that he got the footage. Uh, and it turned out that the quote they told him was, we wouldn't want to damage C-SPAN's relationship with Leader Pelosi and her office. So that's yeah. why they were um, restrained on giving Demeter the footage in the first place, because they didn't want to damage their relations with Pelosi. So again, it, it drills down to this point whereby a 16-year-old with a cell phone camera is more hard-hitting, more of a muckraking journalist than a global brand like C-SPAN, backed by, you know, billions and billions of dollars of funding. And they're representative of the mainstream media. They don't ask hard questions. They're getting embarrassed. They're getting put to shame by a 16-year-old with a cell phone camera. Absolutely. I remember when they were working on Obamacare and somebody yelled to Nancy Pelosi, what's the constitutional basis for that? And she just laughed it off and said, are you serious? Are you serious? And walked off. That that was very telling. But I just love the way she stammered and stuttered about this. I mean, she clearly wasn't expecting anything like this from some high school students. And he was very self-deprecating. He said, if I, a shy, socially inept high school student, I'm reading from your article here, can expose on a global scale the paradox that is politics by asking nothing more than a question, then so can you. That's exactly it. I mean, he embodies what we were trying to do with the, uh, with the Paul Revere contest, and that was to get people to realize that they could go out and produce their, their own news. They could do their own stories, their own films. They could get these people because, and, and isn't this the case, Paul, that what this really kind of shows us is that the real danger of one of the real dangers of violating everybody's privacy is the self-censorship that comes after that. Now, in the case of the news media, we see this as censoring themselves about what they want to say because they want access. But for us as individuals, once we get intimidated by the fact that the NSA is watching everything that, they were, that we're doing and listening to everything that we're doing, it really does have a big effect on our actions. And I was told privately by one of the uh, Danes that, I, that we met in Copenhagen, that there were a lot of Danish people that were afraid, that, that were aware of what was going on with Bilderberg, but they did not want to show up there. They did not want to get their pictures on camera because they were afraid that that would have real repercussions for them because the government is so intertwined with uh, people's jobs in the, uh, in the welfare state there in Copenhagen and Denmark. I think it, <clears throat> it gets to a point, David, where if you become as public as possible, then it, it goes beyond the intimidation. And in fact, you end up getting treated better because the establishment is so afraid of mistreating you that you might produce a story about it. You might yeah. throw the shame back on them. But yes. you actually, the more, the bolder you are, the better you end up being treated. Um, whether that applies to surveillance or not, I don't know. But exactly, it's an intimidation tactic. And when people say, well, what do you have to hide? You know, if you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to worry about. Well, then give me your email password. Give me your bank account login access. They yes. won't do it, but if the government's asking for it, it's all well and good. So again, it's it's that contradiction, but 
that's definitely a part of the NSA surveillance. It's about making us believe that we're all under constant watch when in fact they can't watch what we're doing all the time. It's, it's keywords, it's databases. Um, and that, that prevents people from expressing their freedoms just as... We're going to be example, right. The, we're going to take a break, okay. Paul. We're going to be right back. And what you said is absolutely true. We've seen that in the case of John Corbett. We'll talk about that as he went with the TSA. What they did was they backed off and said, all right, you got to pass for life. We're not going to mess with you anymore. We'll we're be right on the back. March.